Tim Eatman is the assistant head coach who's now taking over right now while Steve Vivian Stringer is out. Aurel Garant is the big name last year. She's off to the WNBA stardom, first team all Big Ten last year. And it is a different team for sure. A lot of different players to the tune of Ash Brown is here. Laisha Petrie is here. They're both transfers. They were both leading scorers on their teams last year. And they are joining me along with Coach Eatman here on the desk. Let's obviously start with Coach Vivian Stringer. She's a legend. She means so much to so many people. What are you hoping the timeline is for her to come back? Well, we want that timeline to be Coach Stringer's timeline. And the great thing about Coach is that she's prepared us. Our whole staff has been around Coach all our lives. I've known her since I was 19. Coach Michelle Edwards played for Coach. Coach Damone played for Coach. So most of the time when Coach says something, we can finish the sentence. So right now we just got to stay to the course and keep doing the things that we need to do to get Rutgers basketball where it needs to be. And when Coach decides that the doctor says it's time for her to come back and, and join the team, we'll be excited about that. Yeah. Well, from all of us, we certainly hope uh, she's as healthy as can be and gets back yes, she is. as yes, she soon is. as possible. Um, this really is a new team. I yes, mean, can you think of a time you've had this much of a new team from one year to another in your years as a coach? Well, I can think of a time when we have this many new players, but yeah. not when we had the same amount of new uh, returners. Yeah. So you got eight, eight returners, you got eight newcomers, so you got a balance of trying to figure out how to play the Rutgers way, and hopefully our... Our leaders, our kids who return, understand how to teach our other players how to do it the Rutgers way, and we're excited about that. Laisha and Ash, you're both transfers from other schools. Mm -hmm. You're both real good. <laughs> you could have gone anywhere. Why'd you mm -hmm. choose Rutgers? Um, I chose Rutgers is right when I talked to them and spoke to them. They made me feel like a family. They told my family, we're going to take care of your daughter. We're going to make sure she does X, Y, Z. We're going to make sure she gets the education she needs and everything she needs with life and develop a mindset that's going to help me in the future. So that's why I chose Rutgers. Um, I personally chose Rutgers because I was looking for a challenge and a next step to take my, lane, my game to the next level, which I know Rutgers has a great resume in that area. Um, and then when I spoke to Coach Eatman, he really convinced me that the Big Ten is where I need to be and playing against um, all these schools that are close to home because I'm from Michigan. Um, that was the thing that won me over on top of Coach Stringer being who she is. You know, it's interesting you say that because a lot of times we'll do these interviews and I'll set up something like, hey, you know, how important is it to the league? And the, and the players honestly more is just like, well, I'm here for my reasons and I like this school. But that's interesting that you thought the league was part of the reason you were interested in coming yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Big Ten has been a part of, like, Michigan, uh, Michigan and Michigan State battling and the Ohio State rival um, since I was a little girl. So playing against them, uh, that's a big reason where my family can come to all the games too so you're both in an interesting spot because you're new to the team but you're not new to the sport right mm -hmm. do you feel it's your job to be a leader even though it's your first year as a player on this team yes and no sometimes because some drills i don't be knowing so i gotta <laughs> i feel like a freshman like i have to be <laughs> at the back of the line or in the middle of the line i'm not the first person to do a drill because i don't know the drill yet or i don't know a certain thing or information so i kind of feel like a freshman but yeah. also a senior at the same time yeah i definitely feel like the dynamic of us having more experience than other players um is different because we have freshmen and sophomore telling us what to do and we're like, we have to submit and listen to them because they know what they're talking about before we do but they learn from us just as much as we learn from them I think we definitely learn from each other a lot in practice and that's what's so interesting Tim about this team is it's new but it's really not young I mean, that's there's right. enough players that have either been there for a little bit or players who have been in college basketball for a while yeah. that are wearing the Rutgers jersey well the, the thing is we have 13 players who's never had an opportunity to go through a summer workout at Rutgers or a fall workout at, at Rutgers. So because they've never had an opportunity to do that, we're dependent on our three returners who's been here for three years, Taya, Joy, and Stephanie, to help, help this team understand the Rutgers way and the way we do things. But now they have the potential, once they learn the Rutgers way, to be a very good group. Yeah. Coach has said this a few times, the Rutgers way. What does that mean to you guys in your time with the program? How do you define the Rutgers way? Um, I would have to say the Rutgers way is just mentally being tough and prepared for everything at all times. What about you, Ash? I would say the Rutgers way is a different level. It's different than any other program. It's You have to be 
tough, faster. You have to be able to think more than your opponent for 40 minutes. We have to be in the best shape for 40 minutes because we run at 55, yeah. we run the press. That's different. Nobody else does that. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, you've been at Rutgers since 2015, roughly. Can you compare how talented and deep this league is as a whole to any of the other years you've been here? I think it's better than ever. I mean, when you talk about this league, Maryland, Iowa, <laughs> Northwestern, good, Indiana, State. <laughs> Ohio State, you, you start looking at the schedule, right? And you try to figure out now where are we going to find a win? Right. And then you know that you got a whole, whole course and win at home. And then you start trying to figure out who do we play at home to have an opportunity to beat them. Um, so it's going to be a challenge. This league is so great. I think it's the best league in college basketball. So by far, this league is the best. And the coaches are tremendous. Every game you have to prepare differently because everybody does things a little different, little tweaks here and there. Uh, but it's a special place, and it's got special coaches. And, and then it's got special players. Yeah. You know, when you got players like this league, um, you, you have a challenge every night. Tim, Ash, Tasha, thank you all very much. Have a great season. We appreciate you joining us. And we thank, thank you, Mike. You. Appreciate it. Right, let's go back over to you, Dave. Mike, thanks. The Rutgers men were a great story last year, making it into the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1991, although in fairness, they would have made it in, in 2020 as well. They won a game for the first time since 1983, and now they look to build. And uh, Geo Baker coming back for a fifth year. You see the transfers as well as Rutgers now looks to take another step under Coach Steve Peichel and very pleased to have both Geo Baker and Ron Harper Jr., here with us and we saw ron a little bit earlier with caleb mcconnell going at it well, video game action so ron caleb's not up here he doesn't have a microphone he, he's off to the side so you can say whatever you want about right. what happened in this game <laughs> uh, who won that game was a showcase of pure domination as you can see i'm having fun with caleb right there i'm winning by like 20. <laughs> you know he not he can't he's not up here to defend himself he's throwing like, his arms up yeah, though on there's the nothing other side to defend. that's what happened that's well, just, exactly you know, harsh reality <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously, this is a really neat setup for you guys. Uh, I was able to go into the locker room and see your jerseys in there. They got the jerseys in the, the Pacers locker room. You know, you've got an NBA locker room. You've got a WNBA locker room. You've got this incredible lounge, all this stuff that's going on. What's this like for the, the players to be able to experience all this, Gio? Oh, it's just super special, um, you know, just to see guys from other teams. I feel like that's always something that's just really fun. And it's something that we missed out on last year. So, um, you know, just exciting to be back to, like, normalcy and, you um, yeah, to see all the guys that we're going to compete with all year. Let's talk a little bit about last year before we move on to this year. Again, it was a breakthrough year. It was really exciting. I think it was gratifying for those of us, even those of us who are on the outside of the program, just with kind of the cruelty of 2020, right? 2020 was cruel on so many levels. And, and frankly, college basketball seasons being canceled is probably, on a global scale, the least of it. And yet we all knew what you guys went through, and we all knew the battle that you had to get there. So what did it mean to step on that court? And, Coach, I'll start with you, but I want to hear from all you guys. What did it mean to step on that court wearing a Rutgers jersey in the NCAA tournament last well, year? Well, I mean, it was like a two-year journey, too. So we started that long time ago when that last season ended with a game at Purdue. And to carry that in the pandemic and all the other issues that are facing these young student athletes, just, just amazing to get there. Um, and to be able to play on that stage. And that's what we talked about when we recruited these two guys. It hadn't been done in a long time. And, you know, Caleb McConnell, all these guys jumped on board when uh, we didn't have that kind of tradition, you know, and they, they did it. So it was an exciting year, and uh, we're looking for another exciting year this year. Before we move on to this year, Gio and Ron, I, I'm, I'm interested. Like, Ron, when you think about stepping on that court, playing in the NCAA tournament. And, and again, the culmination of all these things that you had worked for and, and that were taken away the year before, what did it mean to you? Oh, it meant a lot, you know, it was a dream come true. Like Coach Pago said, it was a two year journey. Uh, my sophomore season ended at Purdue and we would have made the tournament. So last year was a real fulfilling moment. And you know, a bunch of people always come up to me and tell, tell me that the Rutgers men's basketball team was like the light of their life during the pandemic. You know, us getting to the tournament for the first time in 30 years, it meant a lot for us, but a lot for the fans. It brought a lot of people joy. And you know, we're looking to bring that same joy this year. Gio? Yeah, I mean, I was pretty much going to say the same thing. Um, you know, I feel like uh, one thing that Ron had really mentioned is, you know, we, we sacrificed a lot, you mm -hmm. know, off the court. You know, we couldn't really see friends, couldn't see family. Mm -hmm. so. 
it made it that much more special for us. But like Ron said, you know, the fans hadn't seen that in 30 years. So that's something that was super special for them as well. So how do you build on it, Gio? What's the next step with this program? I mean, we talk about it all the time we want to win a national championship. Um, you know, we'll, we'll come out and say that to anybody. Um, you know, that's our goal. We say it every single day in practice. Um, and I feel like we had the off season um, like, like a national championship. Like we've really been working very hard um, together as a unit. And um, that's our goal. All right, so how do you make that goal reality, Ron? What do you guys need to do with this team to go from being a really good team, being one of the top 32 teams in the country, yeah. to being the best team in the country? To be the best team in the country, we just got to all embrace our roles and embrace the hardships and the sacrifices that we have to make to be a national championship caliber team. And for that to happen, we got to do things we're not used to doing. And, you know, I think we had a great offseason, a lot of guys getting a lot of individual work in. And I feel like the whole roster went through 15 improved this offseason in many aspects of the game. And we, we really work hard and we love each other. And this is a great group of guys and this is the group to do it. There is uncertainty for a coach every offseason now in college basketball. <laughs> Right, because you have the ability for players to transfer anywhere they want to go. Now the flip side is true. Of course, you can go and, and work the transfer portal as, as you have as well. But there's also the possibility of, of turning pro. And so when you found out from both of these guys that they were going to be part of your roster next year, take me through what you heard. Well, I tell what you, you spend too much time talking about, you know, guys that have left. I want to really brag about the guys that stayed in the program and done an unbelievable job. Caleb McConnell, uh, these two guys coming back, that was one of the happiest days, you know, of my coaching career. But Paul Mulcahy and Cliff and all the different players that have worked hard, Mawat Mag and Oscar and Dean Reber, um, these guys have done an unbelievable job. And then we picked up two guys in the portal that are mature and going to help us. Um, so I'm very thankful for this year's roster. I love coaching these guys. I told them that the other day, and I know Gio hasn't heard that in five years when, when Coach Peichel said, like, I really like this team a lot, and we got some special qualities. Uh, but having these guys come back and, and uh, having the summers, you know, that they had and the improvements that they made, you know, bodes really well for us moving forward here, and we're, we're looking for a real special year today. You mentioned Caleb, and he's here with you as well. And, of course, he had some health issues early on last year. And at a certain point, I think you had told me you weren't even sure you were going to have him at all. Right. And then for him to come back and, and really play well and, and contribute at times for you, what does it mean to have him healthy from the word go? I mean, he's been great from day one. I mean, he had a double-double in the NCAA tournament last year. Um, he's played through every kind of injury. He's a worker. These guys know. Uh, he's going to have a special year this year, and it started with him being healthy for the first time in the offseason. And if he can continue that through, he's got good leadership qualities. He wants to be one of the best defenders in the conference, and he can be. Um, you know, So just to have someone with his experience and his grit and toughness really means a lot to our program. Uh, Cliff Amorier now taking over kind of full-time as your starting center. There was a ton of hype around him when he came in last year, and we saw flashes of it. We certainly saw his ability to alter the game on the interior. How does he take the next step? He's been great, and these guys will tell you, he's had as good an offseason, worked out with the Nigerian national team. Uh, he's as hard a worker as we've had in the program. Um, he's athletic. You know, we had two players last year at that spot. He did get hurt during the season, which is a hard thing to do. Your freshman year is always tough. But this kid's special in so many ways. Great student, great person, a worker. Um, I think people are going to understand how good Cliff is this year. So it sounds like he has really elevated his game. I'm interested from both of you in going through summer workouts and now early on here in preseason workouts. Ron, who else has elevated? Who else can we expect to, uh, I think, to make contribution? I think uh, Mawat Mag is really elevated. You know, him and Cliff are roommates, so they push each other pretty hard. They're always in the gym. But Mawat has really elevated his game, and he's embracing his role, and he does all the little things, and he's one of the best defenders I have to go against. You know, I have the privilege of getting guarded by him and Caleb McConnell in practice, so it doesn't really get better than that. But Mawat Mag is going to have a great year. He's going to show a lot of people what he's capable of, and I'm excited for him. Gio, I want to ask you a bit about NIL. You were really a strong advocate for that. You were a, a, one of the players who spoke out quite a bit about, hey, this is an opportunity that student athletes ought to have. How do you feel about the way that it has played out? I mean, I'm just happy. I'm excited. Um, you know, when I was speaking out, um, you know, I had my teammates support, I had coaches support, um, mm -hmm. was something that was really special to me. But, um, you know, right now I'm just happy about all the opportunities for people. I think when I think of NIL, I think about individuality. I think about, um, you know, basketball players as people, not just as basketball players. So everyone kind of gets to put their own little individual spin on, the, on whatever opportunities they may have. So I'm excited for it.
Last question for you, Coach. You didn't really play your freshman a whole lot last year, maybe outside of Cliff, because you didn't really need to, right? I mean, you had kind of this veteran core. You had a really good team. But some of these players were pretty heavily recruited guys. Who can step up uh, among the players we didn't see a whole lot of last year? Moat Mag was was a, a player, a younger player who was right. mentioned, but but who else? I tell you, it's been a real competitive offseason. And, you know, we have a freshman, Jaden Jones, who's six foot eight and really talented scorer. Um, we have Dean Reber, six foot ten and terrific athlete, a big guy around the basket. We have Oscar Palmquist, the guy from Sweden, a lefty shooter that can shoot the basketball. Uh, we brought in Jalen Miller, uh, a guard who could really defend, especially on the ball. And we brought in, you know, a couple of uh, transfers too, and Andre Hyatt and Ralph Agee is six foot nine, six ten, and two sixty five, uh, a man. And uh, I'm really excited. This locker room's been great. They've worked hard. There's going to be a lot of guys competing for minutes. Um, it, it's going to be an exciting season in Piscataway. Well, it was exciting last year as well. It'll be really cool to see the fans back in the rack. I know you guys echo that sentiment. They deserve to, to be a part of what you guys have, have built. Steve Peichel, Geo Baker, Ron Harper Jr., thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank Best you. of luck this year. I was mentioning the, the locker room and how cool it is, uh, the jerseys. You see them in there. And again, this is in the Pacers locker room here really a huge part of what this media days is all about very special